And as you make your way into this beautiful garden, we are setting the tension to begin to connect with Sharon's energy. And as you make your way deeper into the garden, I want you to look around and tell me what you see. As we were going into the garden, we veered off. And now it just feels like we've lost. We were on the path, but we decided to go. I want to say, instead of going down, we're like, I don't want to go down. I'm going this way. I'm going straight. Mm -hmm. I feel a sense of, and now I'm lost. And I'm like, okay, well, I want the garden to be here. Like, it should be here. Like, I wanted to go this path to go to the garden instead of going down. If you were to follow the other path, tell me where that takes you. It's dark. It's like a void. There's um, a lot of space for interpretation. It's like now you have this space and all of you are left with are your thoughts of, well, it should be here. It should be like this. I wanted to take the high road, so it should look like this. It should look better from this view. It should be better from up here. Instead of going down into it and experiencing it, you wanted to take it on your own path and see it from your own point of view from above looking down rather than going into it. So what is that created in her life by taking that different path? Instead of going down into the garden, to experience it, to feel it, to smell it, to touch it, taste it if you want to. It's in a, a different perspective from above looking down and, and getting just that perspective only of what it looks like from this angle. And from this angle, you only see one point of view. You can't walk through it and actually experience it and see it and touch it and taste it and smell it. You only see it from the top looking down. And so the trees just look like sharp points at the top. You just see pointy trees from the top looking down and you don't actually see the lush and experience them fluffy and giving and lovely the point of view that you are seeing this garden from looks not as appeasing as what it would be if you were among it and in it and experiencing it but it can be scary to go within it because it's safer you feel to be above it and just look down on it rather than let maybe the brush poke you or be exposed to the unknown 
which is just showing the unknown is maybe just a butterfly sitting on your shoulder. But if you're looking the opposite direction of the butterfly, you don't know what landed on you. And it may spook you, but if you just turn and look at it, it's just a butterfly. So do you get a sense of what caused her to take the higher path instead of being down in the garden? It seemed like a safer route. Mm Mm-hmm. This way I won't be touched. That way you're not subjected to things that you do not have control of. But I've also found that in this space it's very alone and the darkness can consume you. What does she need to understand about this way of thinking? Or how can she begin to shift it so she can experience more of the garden? Being open to the unknown and letting go of the reins a bit and allowing the flow of nature and just be among it. You can't control nature and that is what's scary. And we're also nature beings. So that way it's important for us to surrender to the flow And that way we are all connected and we work together and not against one another. So I would say now I see her in the garden, a little frightened, don't want to take a step, but the trees and there's wind that is kind of behind her back encouraging her to move forward the trees say I want to give you oxygen the water says I want to bring you nourishment the ground says I want to bring you healing minerals it's like I want to give to you but you have closed yourself off You just let go of the reins a bit and open up. It's like the wind says, I will guide you. Trust the flow. We do not want to harm you. We want to help you. She says that she holds a lot of resentment and anger for the way that our earth is treated, earth trauma, ecological abuse, Maui desolation. What does she need to understand about that? You can't look at it from above and see, oh, but over here, This is being burned. Oh, over there, it's being poisoned. Oh, over there, it's doing this. When right below your feet, you have the earth that is wanting to nourish you. And in return, whenever we connect, we give back. So show your appreciation for what's below your feet. That is not burned. That is not poisoned. And embrace what you have at your fingertips, right outside your door. 
embrace and in, and love it and be grateful for what you have and that love only creates a bigger love and that when you connect with the trees and reciprocate your love because it is giving love to you and you give love back through gratitude and appreciation that runs through the network of those trees and that is how it travels through the underground reaching even Maui and you are sending it love rather than resentment the way to get above this is not by being above it but by embracing it and loving it and just showing it your unconditional love rather than your fear and your anger because that is what is being reciprocated and though we understand it's from a good place out of love but you must show that through love showing love through anger and aggression only creates more anger and aggression you can be angry and sad for what has happened but the only way to fight back is through love otherwise you create more of what you feel when you have gratitude for what you have right outside your door and you step outside barefoot and you hug trees and you tell the earth beneath you how grateful and how much you love it and appreciate it that will radiate even bigger because when you are angry and resentful you do nothing but rot from the inside out you're creating darkness that does nothing but turn bitter and that helps nothing in this fight we must fight this war with our love Embrace the trees right outside our door and love them. Their signals will send to the ends of the earth of this love. And it will be rebuilt quicker than we can even imagine if we do it this way. We're infusing it and changing the chemistry with the love that we have inside of us through the connection that we have with nature and that's how we build it back up and become stronger she said she struggles a little bit with forgiveness and neutralizing her reactions can you share with her to help her when she's feeling that emotion come to the surface how does she neutralize that more effectively i feel that the trees keep coming through and they're like come give us a hug <laughs> and we will radiate that onto you we will help you neutralize that and in the neutralization, you will feel the connection and the love and you will not feel a disconnect and not able to feel angry and therefore you will rise in your frequency. I'm seeing nature and especially the trees are very much calling to her, 
calling to all of us to please come and connect with us. But what we can do today is help with that and remove whatever blocks that are keeping the energy levels only to remain neutral. And if there are blocks that need to be removed, we will do that today. Wonderful. Would you like to begin that work now? If there's not anything else that needs to be addressed, then we can move forward. Let me just look. So what she had put is she's also struggling with ongoing judgment and criticism that constantly port points to the patriarchy masculine that, yes this is that same resonant frequency that is where she tends to be which feels like there is blockage that isn't allowing the frequency to rise so this is right. the same all right Very resonant good. frequency that will contribute to these thoughts and aggression and the more dense energy so it seems connected. Wonderful. Well, let's begin working on unblocking that energy. So just allowing the connection to the starship and bringing forward the technologies needed for that blockage. And just let me know what you see. There is pent up energy between the solar plexus and the heart in the midsection of the body. Mm -hmm. Do you get a sense of what created that pent up energy? Was that an experience in this life? Anything that comes through? From a very young age, a lot of us are taught not to express emotions and a lot of times when we do, we feel that they are either rejected, unheard, pushed aside, like it doesn't matter, like we don't matter. How I feel doesn't matter whether I express it or not. It will not change anything. Then this conditioning is brought on very early and then infused into our being. And then we grow up with that belief system when that is the opposite of our natural flow of things because obviously when we have built up energy a lot of times we let it out through our eyes and we release this through crying if we are unable to release the tears then they will eventually manifest into something else or be released in a more unpleasant way so in an early age when we feel unseen unheard we bottle things up and then we get upset as time goes on because that built up energy becomes frustration, anger, resentment to those who do not hear us or see us. And through time, this will continue to build and continue to build and we let it out in such ways that aren't 
necessarily conducive to what we are truly feeling and they come out in different forms in different ways and then we become even more misunderstood that's not how we meant it but that is the only way it could release because we've created such distortion within our body that once it's released, it has no control in how it is delivered. We just needed to open the barn door. And when you have so many animals pent up, then they'll all just come flocking out when you meant to just let out the horse. And then the chickens come flying too. Because you opened up just a little bit of escape and everything wants out. And so when you meant to just let out this one thing, then here comes all of them. I don't know why I'm getting this in the example of a barn full of animals. Mm. It's like you're only wanting to let out the cow or the horse, but then there's the chickens and the sheep and the pigs who let out too. You open it just a small bit. So let's begin now that we have a deeper understanding of how that energy begins to build up, let's take a look at how we can begin to unblock that. So the energy can flow once again between the solar plexus and the heart. What do we need to do for Sharon today? First, we need to recognize what it is and understand most importantly that this has nothing to do with the essence of who you are. This has been distorted to you, believing that you are unworthy. Of getting rid of your baggage. And you identifying too closely. And getting confused with the emotions that you've carried with the essence of what you are. Your thoughts, your feelings are very much valid. You feel a lot. And it has been easier to express this through anger. And you cannot see why others cannot see what you see. And this makes it hard to trust others because they obviously do not have pure intentions. You feel and see on a level that you feel others should be able to feel and see, but not, that's not always the case. Unfortunately, sometimes we are given people in our experience here, the ones that will squish us the most and this is only for you to remember exactly who you are and power through it and rise above it to be an even stronger force than you may even understand that you are but we will say this is not through anger and aggression It's time to release those lower frequency emotions. This has been your way of survival up until recently, but these feelings have no longer served you and now are beginning to take a toll on your body.
we have compassion because we understand that this has been what has got you to this point as far as survival goes. But now it's time to understand that these frequencies are more hindering than helpful at this time. Acknowledge that they have got you to this point and be grateful for all the lessons and what has happened to get you to this point. But you wouldn't be here if your soul knew it wasn't time for a switch. You are a power force. But it now must come from a new place of love. No more fighting. Very good. What do we need to do to begin to release some of these blocked emotions? I feel lighter already in this. I feel there was a reckoning or recognition of understanding. She is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And she can do this herself, but right now we will assist in clearing we will start with the breath how would you like to go about it today what is she right need? now we will infuse frequencies of breaking through this dense matter and we will ask her to breathe along in this and feel it from within you will start to feel a lightness, maybe a bit of chills. This dense energy kept you warm, maybe a bit hot. That's why you say, I'm heated. Well, this dense energy is a heavy blanket. Now, as the blanket is removed, it may feel light and airy but this makes it easier to flow and easier for energy to move easier for healing if you've blocked every piece every exit on your body Then how was this energy supposed to leave? Now, as the energy has been dissipated, the ducts begin to open. So the energy can release and the light can come in. more open channel for receiving and releasing. So you mentioned the ducks and her main issue that she's been dealing with for quite some time is left breast and lymph node cancer and also invasive ductal carcinoma. What can you share with her about why that's been able to manifest in her body, how that's connected to what you're bringing through so far? Just the blocks that have been created, the areas and the pockets within the body have been filled up with the dense aggression and energy. Again, we do not want this to be felt as if 
it is of a fault. We understand these emotions are used for survival and did its job properly to make you strong and resilient. But now we must pass that, pass the baton, and now we are on this leg where we don't need to have that sense or outlook. It is now a whole new world that we're entering into. A new frequency of survival. And that is through love. And compassion. Even for the ones who have. Been the. giver of our traumas and heartbreak along the way. We are not saying you have to be their best friend, but you must release the negative feelings you have for these individuals or collective of beings. if you fight with the same energy of what they are that just builds them we feel you understand this but sometimes it is hard to see from a different perspective But through the clearing today, we are confident that you will understand this new frequency and how to beat it is by loving it and appreciating that it got you this far and made you the warrior that you are, but now it is time. To see it through the lens of compassion and understanding. So she deals with a lot of abandonment issues, neglect by her mother, abandonment and neglect by family. Her ex-husband, these seem to be key themes that have played out throughout her life. What does she need to understand about the themes of abandonment and neglect? The pattern that was brought in through the ex-husband was... The loop that was continued from early childhood with the parents. We experience these loops when we do not break the cycle or when we do not, we can call it karma, do not break the karmic loops the trauma loops if we do not recognize what we are holding within us these emotions are at a vibratory state and if we do not move past these vibratory states then what we will attract will be within the realm of these vibratory states If the wounds are not properly healed and addressed and released, 
then we will continue to receive situations, people, and circumstances of that certain vibratory rate. Though they could be seen higher, we can only experience and perceive at the rate at which we stand. So if we are in this frequency of feeling that we only get abandoned, we have been abandoned, I have been abandoned, I am not heard, I am not worthy of being stuck around for then if we carry those thoughts of ourselves then that is what we will be presented with unless we rise above and heal and recognize that these are only circumstances to learn from And not to be attached to because we are more than that. We are more than what happens. We are more than how things have been perceived to be. We are more than that and the purpose here is the remembering because when we were brought in we understand we forget the all that we are and this whole game is to unfortunately before the rising of the frequency of earth where we were trapped in the lower densities we forget and we're not able to understand and then we identify with those frequencies that were learned at a very younger age and we think, oh, well, this must be how the world is because this is how I feel. Because as the humans, they feel as if what they feel is what they are. Because these emotions and these feelings are very, very real. And it brings more of a separation from who we truly are. And that is what creates the diseases within us. Is because we throughout our lives build this barrier between who we are and what we think we are and what we think we are capable of receiving. And the feeling of abandonment. And we are so sorry. This is a deep trauma beyond even here on earth. This goes even as deep as feeling like you are abandoned from the creator itself and we are so sorry that you feel this way we never want our children to feel disconnected from us we have never left you And then when you are given circumstances and situations on this earth that makes those feelings stronger, then you feel, okay, well, my creator has abandoned me because everyone abandons me. And we are so sorry, my child, for feeling this way.
You are so loved, and we have never left you. What does Sharon need to understand about how powerful she is? What can you tell her about that power she has within? Right now, I'm having a hard time adjusting to this frequency. What frequency is that? Is it the frequency of her guides? Tell me what you're feeling. It is in deep, deep, intense love, and I feel it is the creator itself. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Just take some nice deep breaths in. That's a very intense frequency when it comes in. And just take your time. It's making my heart burst. Mm -hmm. Just using that breath to breathe in. What is it that the creator would like to share today? You've never been alone. I've never abandoned you. And these circumstances and situations in the lifetimes here on earth has created a belief of separation. Making you feel the disconnect, creating the dis-ease within you because you know in your soul but it's just been so hard to see and to feel through the heavy darkness and the heavy dense energies and we would like to help in removing this today so that you can Feel the all that all that you are and the all that I am. I know that I run through you and you run through me and we are all the same. How do we create that connection for her today so she can feel more of that energy? I'm going to, I feel as if I am being held and the frequency within me is being regulated. Mm -hmm. It very it? much feels as if the angels are holding me. And so in this, I will just have the angels hold on. similar to the med bed but what we will invite you to see is your angels wrapped around you holding you up floating in a state of bliss and peace like you've never felt before. That you have felt that this is a state of home that has been so long since you have felt it, but this is a remembering of what it feels like to be home, and you can feel this feeling at any time. It's a state of remembering. The trueness in what you are. Beyond the illusion of what is around you that you see 
And there is a disconnect and a disease within the, the eyes and how you view. Because you know that what you see is the illusion. It's not real. And it's creating this separation within you. But once you feel and remember, then you will understand to see things through a different point of view and a more loving and nurturing and compassionate point of view. Removing the disassociation, removing the dis-ease that you hold in your eyes so that you can see things for how they truly are and not just what the world shows you in a three-dimensional matter space, but through the lens of the I am through the lens of unconditional love. Through the lens of the purity of all that you are. So we will sit here. in the remembering until it becomes a knowing to remove the beliefs that you have created and replace them with the knowing of what is It's an infusion of light. It's so bright and translucent. It's shimmery. It's like a prism. The rainbows, but not like it's like the rainbows of the different colors, or I can only just describe it as like whenever you are spraying a water hose outside in the light and you get a glimpse of the rainbow through the mist. As the light hits it. It's like your body is. Crying. Releasing all that you've been holding on to. And as you release this. It's like you're the water hose. And the water is coming out. And the light is there. To reflect on all of it, making it light and beautiful, creating this rainbow and purifying the thoughts. So you mentioned her eyes and what she was not seeing. And she's experiencing macular degeneration and retinal membrane. Her vision is moderately compromised. Can we take a look at those eyes and see what clearing, healing needs to happen there? Yes. We mentioned before this was a disconnect 
of your soul knowing one thing, but your human body seeing something different. It's stuck in that lower vibrational outlook creating the disease and the disconnect, making it further and further away from the truth. Which is the truth is the light. So as you go away from it, naturally, this is the darkness. And when we say darkness, we just want to emphasize this doesn't mean bad. You associate darkness and negative in your world as it being bad, but all that it is is a different point of view. And though different points of view are what creates the collective understanding of all that is, we cannot stay in that. We must move towards the light because that is our resonant frequency. And the more that we stay in the darkness, that is what creates the dis-ease. So knowing where you've been within the darkness wasn't a bad place. And we feel a lot of people shame themselves when they are in this place and there is no shame for if we did not go away from the light to experience this darkness we would not be able to come back to the light to give it a new perspective to give it a different point of view like so when we first moved away from source into the darkness this feels like we, if we stay out for too long, this can feel like an abandonment. And we can sometimes get lost in it. This doesn't mean that we did anything wrong or did anything bad. Because once we come back to the light, we make it even bigger and bring a whole new understanding. So we thank you or what you are bringing back to understand. This is how we grow and continue to create. So with your eyes, it's the same concept, but just in a human body. You have just been looking in the darkness for too long, and that can be a strain on the eyes. If it's darkness, you can't really see, and your eyes have to work harder and harder and harder. So we just have to point out that this isn't how you have to see anymore. You can come back this way. And close the gaps. And see from the light. And that distance that you went. something that is now a part of you, but it's not something to be I'm trying to find the word identified as so we would just Ask now that you 
see through a different lens. Turn on the light. It's easier on the eyes. But we understand the blocks that are there. So we're going to ask you to receive this. We will call it a transfusion of energy. Where we will gently hold your head and through the higher frequency that you will be attached to here, it will create new pathways and understandings for you to see or allow you to see on a higher frequency. So we will remove the blocks. So now I will just tell you your head is being held by a higher vibrational frequency being. Infusing your head with light through this it travels through the darkness that you have been it's showing I will give you the example of the model that I'm showing on one end of, just say, the oval, which is your it's like your brain. I'll explain this the best that I can. You have your brain at the far right of this oval. In the center, you have your eyes and the connection from your brain to your eyes. And then out in front of you is your perception and how you perceive the things. Right now, it's showing the distance between your eyes and what you perceive to be There's a shadow, and this shadow is a reflection of the dense energy that you have been carrying. So in a way, it has put a darker lens over your eyes to see things through this frequency. So what we are doing now is brightening up the space between your eyes and the world that you see. We are inviting new perspectives in. But you must know that because of your free will, you can choose to stay and see as you have been. But what we are doing today is offering you a new perspective. 
we can only show you what can happen should you let these beliefs go. There is no right or wrong way for you will learn and grow, but you get to choose in which way you would like to grow. The light is softer, lighter, and you have been preparing yourself for this for your entire life. You are strong. For the light is truth. And sometimes the truth can be hard to see. The truth can be hard to swallow, as the saying goes. However, the truth is what sets you free. We can show you the light, which in turn is the truth, the truth of what you truly are. But we understand on this earth plane, it can be easier to continue to play the role of a human. It's up to your perspective on which you think is the better route. For some, some like to stay what they've been comfortable with. But also what is comfortable creates this, this ease from the truth. And in turn, as the frequencies of the earth and of Gaia are rising, it's going to be harder for the humans who stay in the frequency of anger. It's going to be detrimental to your bodies if you do not release this. But the choice is yours. How do those eyes look now? What do you see? We are opening the new perspectives. It is lighter. We have provided the light. But it's up to you if you want to keep the light on. Wonderful. And we must go ahead. I'm sorry. Say with the light, one thing that you must get used to is in the world that the illusion around you that is the lower frequencies and we will say it is a bit dark you when you become the light what is shown is one step at a time and we understand you as and a lot of other humans like to see where you're going and what the view looks like. If I'm going to continue to travel this path, I want to see how it looks. We understand. But when you are a light in the darkness, think of it as if you are out in the woods with a flashlight. You can only see just a little bit in front of you. And that's how it will seem for a while. 
But we want you to understand that right now, there are a lot of you that are choosing to go with the flashlight and see the one step ahead. And we see this image of the forest where each of you are holding just your flashlight. But once all of you come together with the lights, it illuminates the whole forest. Though the path may seem lonely for a while, you are not alone. And that is a, a lot of the discouraging of this path is because it does get lonely. But you must remember that you are never alone. And in time, we will all come back together and it will be so bright we no longer will need the flashlight because our essence alone will light up the whole place. So we will say, should you choose to keep your light on, and there are times that come where you feel it's a lonely path, to call on your angels and your guides to illuminate the path and make it a bit brighter for you and to hold you so it doesn't feel like you are walking through the forest alone. But just like everything else, help must be called upon and your guides are always at your side. But when you ask to be held, they would love nothing more than to hold you. And for you to sit and feel their presence and feel being held. And that makes it a lot easier to move forward. For then you are no longer walking, but you are floating as you are being carried. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's check back on the left breast, the lymph node cancer. What can we do today to help clear and release that energy from the body? We will use the light technology to make this energy easier for releasing rather than it being a, we'll say, um, like a ball of energy. We will break it down to where it's just particles making the releasing a much easier process. But we will start with infusing it first and breaking it down. We will start on the table. Okay. We'll call it a med bed. And in this med bed, you can begin to feel it's just this. Um, it just feels as if there's this shining of putting a spotlight on the left breast. Basically just making it become aware. Focus is there.
and in this we'll also ask you to think about those people who have made you feel abandoned, unworthy, unseen, unheard. And we will help you in forgiving them. Because what you carry here is not only yours, but an energy of theirs that you have attached onto. So we must release that energy that you are hanging on to them as well. We feel like now would also be an appropriate time to do a cutting of the cord and the cords attached to these individuals. Wonderful. So what we can do is even ask for help. And we know Heather and I like to call on Archangel Michael mm -hmm. with his magnificent sword as this slices through these energy cords flawlessly, beautifully, and not only severing, but infusing these cords with love and light, that they go back not feeling heavy and empty, but powerful and inspiring. And I will ask for a tuning fork in this as well as we release with the heart. This is the 528. As we begin to imagine these chords and Archangel Michael here ready with the sword. The sword of light, of beauty, and of love, only to build up and to not break down. And whenever you're ready, Heather. Okay. And this tuning fork is going to play more than once. Wonderful. How do those chords look? They are detaching. And we must understand that these chords are created by you. And we know how powerful your energy is. And if you continue to have these thoughts, 
the chords can be recreated. But right now we are helping you release these. But how you move forward is up to you. And with the frequencies that we just use, it's a DNA repairment. It is like a reconstruction of where it had been fragmented off of where you have given your power away. And as we continue to burst through the dense frequency around this left area of the chest, once this is completed and removed, we will continue to work on your DNA and not only repair it, but infuse it. And coat it. I'm still getting that this area still seems a little heavy and though you are disconnecting the energies it is just the dense energies because not only were these people of great disconnect but there was a love there and that is not disconnected and will never be disconnected. So in cutting of these cords, you are not completely severing off from the love that was shared between these individuals. The love will always remain. All the attachments to it are what we are releasing for anything outside of love. Is just something that we have created and is no longer needed to be carried. So while we are releasing, just know this doesn't completely cut off the love that was there between these individuals. The love is all that remains and is very good let's and I feel this chest area becoming lighter mm -hmm. and as the this energy has broken up we will now it is a bit of a magnet type technology that will pull the fragments out and as these fragments are pulled out they are transmuted and going back into light energy so now It is more of a pulling and just opening up the uh, chest cavity. Just breathe to feel the expansion. As this energy is being pulled out with your breath, imagine the light, the light energy that you are pulling in and infusing this space. 
So which with each breath you feel from one cavity to the other just being filled with pure life force, love, light, and energy. We will stay here for just a little bit longer as you feel your chest expanding. Because next I see that we will be going to a place I have yet to even visit. Did not know this was here until now. Mm, what is that? It's a sauna. Mm. We're going for a spa treatment. <laughs> Wonderful and this body has been needing a releasement. Mm. And with this sauna like treatment, it is I see it as if it's in the nature room. However, it is a space that is wooden. It's a wooden box similar to what you would see in a spa or a gym or wherever you would go to a sauna. But it is made of live wood and it is a beautiful, um, I'm going to say like a cherry type color. It's dark and shiny. It's very beautiful. And it's kind of thinner, like thicker round than bamboo, but smaller sticks it's very cute and quaint and enter into the sauna you'll sit and allow your body so in this it is opening your pores and your ducts to release properly what you have been holding on to so as you do in a sauna that you would be here. Same concept. You're going to allow your body to do its natural flow of release, opening and releasing. So we will sit here a bit. And this is working on the lymphatic system, by the way. I don't have much to say about this experience right now, except that your body is opening up and releasing So just sit back and enjoy the natural flow of your body. I feel like this is a theme they are wanting to get through. To be in the natural flow of things. And know that when you are in the state of love, and you go with the flow, all that will be experienced is love, and love will be reciprocated. And your body is a natural flowing system all of its own. And it's when we close off these natural systems 
that things start to get well clogged up kind of like pipes if we are feeding the pipes with things that do not flow let's i'll use this as an example I'm getting this example say like coconut oil being put down your pipes it looks as though it is able to go down it fits in the pipe but it does not flow through it properly and can create a backup and if you close the receiving and close the dispensary part, well, then you get a clogged pipe and things start to steam and burst in places they're not supposed to. And it'll either come up or come down, creating a chaos in the body. So it is very important that we create our natural, or not create, but allow our natural flow and create a very open environment for things to flow naturally through it. So our body can go through its natural flow. it does have healing responses and services all on its own. It's like we try very hard to put artificial inside for the healing of something that is natural. Though this may help at times, but we must remember we have a natural order within ourselves. But sometimes it gets thrown off whenever we clog it up. So how is the body looking as it's been in the sauna? What do you see? Well, there was a lot to open and a lot to release. So right now, what we're going to do is keep quiet for a bit and allow her body to do the natural flow of releasing because now we just see her sweating and releasing these toxins that have been held within the body. Wonderful. So we will ask that you just lay here and imagine your body releasing and the toxins just flowing out of you. It may not hurt to go to a sauna in real life. Sweating will be good at opening those ducts, opening those pores. We will lay here for just another minute, and then next up we will hit the pool. Wonderful. Very good. And you can pause this for as long as you like, but right now we're going to go ahead and go into, and this isn't like any regular pool that you have experienced here before. This pool has water that is cleansing, similar to like a plasma, and it feels so refreshing, and you can feel as it touches your, your body, 
it revitalizing your cells, awakening your insides, brightening your body on its most smallest molecular level. So as you make your way into this water, you feel it so crisp as if a refreshing drink after a long day's work of being outside in the sun. And you take the drink and it's so refreshing. But this is on a whole body level. Feeling it down into your core, into your soul, awakening. Revitalizing. Hydrating. Filling the cells up with an energy that you have not felt in a very long time. It's taking the cells that were, in a way, it kind of looked like um, raisins or prunes or, you know, those dried up fruits. Just filling them up. And now they are shining bright. So just imagine each cell in your body being hydrated. And not only hydrated, but infused. We will let you sit here for a bit. I'm feeling that sense of floating. You're just floating on the water floating on a cloud. It's so light you can barely even feel the water. And your body just feels so light that it could just float away. And while we are here, we encourage you to take some time out within your day. And you can listen to this or you can just imagine it in your head and go there in your head. It's where your mind goes, your heart follows. And in turn, you can be right back here anytime that you want. And we will say just like anything else, the more you practice, the more natural it will come to be in this state of being.
and the lightness. To feel held. And in turn, this gives you a knowing of who and what you truly are. And being able to be among the garden and the trees and earth. And don't look at it from an earthly perspective, which we will say to see earth through the lens of Getting Gaia, the spirit, the soul of earth, the rock in which you walk. That's not all that she is. Just like the body that you hold is not the all that you are. And the more that you embrace the Gaia that she is, the loving, nurturing, wanting to feel the connection of you through the trees, through you being barefoot, she's infusing you and you are infusing her with the love. And that's how you heal earth. And that's how you heal your earthly body. Through connecting to the higher soul of which you are and embracing that. So that way you can be While she's receiving that energy, can we take a look at a few more areas? And particularly, she's wanting more concrete communication with her higher self and guides. Check and make sure that the crown, the pineal are all open and connected and Anything else she needs to know to help her create that connection to her guidance? These connectors are always open, but just like with the eyes or anything else, it's the distance that we create between them is the, the barrier that we have between them that must be removed the things that we hold on to so that will be a part of the clearing that we did today as long as we clear the dense energies and the perceptions that were held and made concrete of a certain way of thinking then we remove the blocks for connection opening the pathways of receiving and creating that open channel for communication. What we can do is work on the energy centers in awakening and aligning and balancing them for a clearer connection. Wonderful. We will do one today, but we are also shown
Um, there is a longer meditation, Heather, mm -hmm. that you have with the clearing of these areas with the tuning forks. Yes. That we can share. Okay. That way this can be done on a regular basis to continue to open this connection. Mm -hmm. I'll send that to Sharon after this session. We'll start at the root and work our way up. Wonderful. So what we are doing is now, as you stand, we are still in the nature room, which is very much a part of Gaia herself. So she assists greatly in these healings. And we will continue to stay here in this healing environment. And use the elements and just the frequencies in this state to open and clear these different areas so in the root area we will ask that you imagine fire we're going to use fire for the lower half is burning red Opening and activating your root chakra. And feeling safe and secure. And rooted in your self. Rooted in Gaia. And grounded. And as we move up, the flame turns orange. As we begin to open the sacral. Feeling safe in who you are. In your feminine And working with the energy of that, not to be opposed as the masculine, as the opposite, as far as the enemy. It is not. These are in need for balance. That is so one as, area that she wanted help with was integration of the inner masculine and feminine, bringing those into balance. Will, that, will this assist her? This is what we are doing now. Wonderful. Thank you. Not to be confused with male, female. Masculine, feminine are energies. One of creation and one of delivering in such a way. And as we move to the top of the flame, and which is yellow, is the solar.
And now that the feminine and masculine are balanced, we understand the whole and complete balance of who you are. And the confidence in that. Because once these bottom two are balanced, it allows the third to be firm in who you are. And through that, you then understand where we become in the center, the heart space, where it is green and love. when you understand who you are, you understand that you are the essence of love. And this is where you work from in this space. And as this space becomes balanced and activated, we then can move up into the throat. That way you can vocalize through the heart space. Once you are rooted and grounded and balanced in the masculine and feminine and understanding who you are and that you are love, you can vocalize from a space of unwavering knowing. And through this knowing, we then move up into the third eye. Seeing all perspectives and knowing that there is not just one. But the all is the truth. All perspectives are exactly as they are. And do not get stuck in one, but to see through all. Understand all. And once you are able to see and understand all perspectives are the equivalent of the full truth, then you are able to open, to know and receive the all that is and be a vessel to work through, to receive and to put out. And this is how these energy centers remain balanced and active. And though we are walking through this space here on earth, sometimes these can get out of balance. And that's why it is important to be a part of a routine to get yourself back in check. And that's why we suggest revisiting the meditation that Heather has created and channeled through her open crown to help keep others aligned and balanced. And this is how she is a gift and how she ignites others to then remember and align so that they can receive and provide gifts. And this is how we cannot help others without first aligning ourselves so that we are receiving the truest, highest, clearest information to be able to deliver the highest and truest from 
gifts from God to help one another in this remembering. Wonderful. Very good. So before we do one final check of her body, her systems, she says that she feels some anxiety about completing her unknown life mission. Is there anything that we can bring through to share with her about that? Anything that she needs to know today? This anxiety is a shakiness because the foundation wasn't set. If you try to move forward from a place of no foundation, well, that just can't happen. It can, but it will continue to be shaky and room for cracks. So that's why it is important to align yourself and this information will be clear. The path will be made clear when you yourself are in balance. Then there is no shakiness when both feet are steady, grounded, which we just work through through the energy centers of your body. When you are grounded and steady and understand who you are and in a place of love to be able to move through the higher chakras of the body, then you are clear on your mission and purpose, which is up to you. How do you want to contribute? Maybe you align yourself, get rid of your baggage, write down notes on how this feels, journal through this process. That way you now you understand what it's like to go through this. You have compassion for all the others who feel the same. And then you are a beacon of hope. Then you are a beacon of light. And you can pull them from the trenches, but you can't pull people from the trenches if you yourself are in them. You must first pull yourself out, then lend the helping hand to others. Your journey that you have gone through, you have created a manual, a guide, because there are so many others who could use a manual or a guide from someone who knows how to get out of that same loop and mindset. Get yourself aligned. And then you can hold out your hand and pull others up. And say, I've been there. Look at where I've been. And look at where I am now able to pull you up. Then they can lend a hand and pull someone else up. And this is how we rise together. Your stories aren't just for you to just hang on to. Your stories are for you to be a hero's journey, to show others that there is hope, that there is a way out for them too. You will be a beacon of light for those who are in your shoes. 
You must take care of yourself first. You have to let go of all of the things that are weighing you down so that you can be strong enough to pull others up. You can't hang on to your baggage and hang on to others and their baggage as well. It's too heavy. Then you will both be sucked down. Lighten yourself. That way you can pull, and not just one. You can pull masses. It's a ripple effect. Your purpose is to align, remember, to heal, and to use what you have gone through to be a light for others. But you must first stand on steady ground. Wonderful. So let's take one final look. Sharon's energy. Is there anything else today we need to address for her? Any additional healing needed? How are things we looking? We will say don't look at the media, the news. We understand you have compassion for others in the world around you. But you cannot look at it if you're going to feel the anger. We want you first to go outside of where you are and see that the beauty of what is now while there is still lush and leaves on the trees to see that this is not burnt down use the view of right outside for the view of earth don't look over there. Look at where you are. And we also feel like this is a perfect time. Because when the earth sheds the leaves, this is a time of rebirth, which a lot of us are going through right now. And will grow back in the spring more lush than ever. But be like the trees, unwavering to the weather. Still stand firm, and you know how they do that. They are grounded and rooted down deep in the knowing that spring will come. They do not think, oh, well, winter's here. I've lost my leaves forever. Oh, Maui's been down, burned down. The whole world is going to go up in flames. No. It will be reborn more beautiful than you could even imagine. But your roots must be strong in the knowing. Beautiful. Anything else today? Or are we complete? I feel we are complete. Wonderful. We would just like to thank all of the beautiful guides who are here with us today assisting in this healing for Sharon. We send you so much gratitude and so much love. 